several times per tour. The power end oil quality, oil quantity and oil pressure should be checked and recorded by the derrick man. The oil reservoir dipstick is located at the rear and the bottom of the power end of the pump. Oil levels are checked when the pump is off and can be done during connections or while servicing pump. Remove dipstick and wipe with a clean cloth. Insert dipstick and check that oil level is at recommended level. Examine oil for any impurities or discoloration. Oil filter pressure suction and discharge gauges indicate the quantity and the pressure of the oil lubricating the power end. These pressures should be set at OEM recommendations. If lower readings are noticed on the suction or the discharge gauges, the pump has to be shut down to prevent damage to power end of pump. It is important to record the oil gauge readings on your checks. These can be used as a reference for your handover notes and to alert supervisors to future preventive maintenance. The moisture trap is to be drained every tour. Remove plug and check for moisture or contaminated oil. Install plug and tighten. If excess fluid is noticed, Report this to the supervisor. It may be an indication of oil seal damage. Check liner wash frequently. Examine returns and check for contaminants in fluid. Change fluid minimum once a tour. If oil is found in fluid, report to supervisor. Make sure pistons and liners are being adequately lubricated and liner wash pump gauge is at normal reading. Inspect each module for hose damage, loose parts and listen for any sounds of piston washing. The mud pump pressure gauges should be recorded at the pump house and verified with the driller's console and standpipe pressure gauges. Remember, mud pump gauge should read a little higher than that of the standpipe pressure gauge. Several times per tour, the derrick man should listen for signs of washes in the fluid end seats and valves. Each module is given special attention, noting any unusual sounds or vibrations. Remember, if you listen to the pump when it is running properly, you can then identify new sounds as potential equipment failures. All information on tour checks should be handed over to the relief derrick man during crew change in the form of a handover note, explaining thoroughly all checks and services that were done and any small details that may aid the other derrick man in identifying a trend problem with parts wearing out prematurely or future PMs. Fluid End Maintenance and Service Prior to performing any maintenance or service on the mud pump, a permit to work must be signed by the senior supervisor and signed by all workers involved in repairs. The mechanic and electrical supervisors will make up the necessary isolation permits and enter them in the isolation log record. The driller and drilling supervisor are informed. All workers involved in repair will review an updated SOP and TRA. The mud pump and associated equipment must be locked out and tagged out by the rig electrician as per BMS 03-34 procedure and verified by the driller from the driller's console. 
a minimum of two locks are to be installed on lockouts. These lockouts cannot be removed until the work permit is closed. When circulating has been stopped, the mud pump can then be mechanically isolated from service by closing the high pressure valves. Once the mud pump is isolated mechanically, the bleeder valve must be placed in the open position to release any trapped pressure or buildup of pressure. Suction screens should be checked, cleaned each tour during a connection under the permit to work system. After work permits are prepared, Review safe operating practice and task risk assessment with workers. Make sure all mechanical and electrical isolation is complete before commencing work. Close suction valve. Open drain valve below screen to relieve any pressure. Loosen cap and remove screen. Clean any material from screen and examine screen for defects. Install screen, gasket and cap. Tighten cap. Check for leaks. The pulsation dampener pressure should be checked on the first and last connection of every tour to ensure the bladder is still operational. An ideal time for this would be while checking the suction screen. Pressure should not exceed OEM recommendations. Record pressure for handover notes. Remember, only nitrogen can be used to refill discharge pulsation dampeners. Only qualified personnel are permitted to refill or repair pulsation dampeners. The derrick man must always be aware of the maximum pressure of the pump for the liners being used. This information is usually located on the side of the pump. After checking the pulsation dampeners, the pressure relief valves can be inspected. Visually inspect the crank, springs and plunger. Check and if needed adjust spring to correct pressure reading of up to 90% of maximum liner or piston rated pressure. All fluid end seats, valves, valve springs, valve guides and valve guide keepers should be checked on a weekly basis by removing the suction and discharge caps. This operation can be performed during a tripping or logging operation or while drilling if rig is equipped with a spare mud pump. All parts, including cap gaskets, should also be inspected for signs of wear or damage and replaced accordingly. When reassembling, Make sure parts are seated correctly. Check threads on module and cap and apply a light lubricant. Make sure all workers are wearing proper PPE. Install cap back into module by hand. Watch for pinch points. When threads are started, the cap is then tightened with the aid of a small bar and tap with a hammer. Do not over tighten caps, as this may stretch threads on cap and module. The mud pump suction chamber should be cleaned of any solids on a weekly or bi weekly basis during a tripping or logging operation, or while drilling if rig is equipped with a spare mud pump. This operation can be performed with the aid of a few basic tools, such as an impact wrench and combination wrench, long handle shovel, and a one inch water hose. Pistons and liners should be checked weekly for signs of wear, and washes in the liners should be rotated to maximize life expectancy. 
piston rod clamp bolts should be visually checked tourly and physically checked weekly to ensure they remain tight as per the OEM specifications. Liner retainer nuts should also be physically checked to ensure they remain tight as per the OEM specifications.